فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في الثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, we have a beautiful series entitled Contentment from Revelation. The idea is to go through the Quran and to look at how we can achieve contentment through the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all searching for happiness, for contentment and for success. In order to achieve this, the Almighty has revealed so many verses and so many books so many scriptures. It's up to us to go through this and to understand the plan of the Almighty. When we understand the plan of the Almighty, we will definitely be able to achieve contentment. Remember one thing, the Almighty, when He created us, did not promise us that we will be the most wealthy or we will be uh, the most influential, etc. But rather, He promises us that if you were to follow what I tell you, you will be happy, you will be content. May the Almighty grant us all contentment. I'm going to start off by looking at the first surah of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off in a unique and beautiful way. Do you know when we're commencing the recitation of the Quran, the first thing we should be reciting or reading is أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. I seek refuge in Allah from Shaytan the accursed. That is the first thing we should be commencing with because if Shaytan or the devil is within your life, you cannot achieve contentment. The first thing you should do and I should do is seek the help of Allah that He protect us from Shaytan the accursed, from the devil from the whispers of the devil. I'm just about to start reading Revelation. I need to protect myself from the devil contaminating my mind. Hence, I may misunderstand the verses or lest I misunderstand the verses and perhaps deviate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So that's the first thing we read. Immediately after that, in order to achieve contentment again, we start off in the most blessed way taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On one hand, we've sought protection in Allah from Shaitan the accursed, and now listen to what we say. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Subhanallah. That is amazing. If you pause for a moment and think about the calmness and the contentment in what Allah has taught us, it is so beautiful in the name of Allah the one who is merciful in a specialized way, the one who is merciful in a very, very broad way. In fact, Ar-Rahman is a, is a broad mercy of Allah and Ar-Rahim is a specialized mercy of Allah. So he is reminding of us of his mercy. He says, we should never lose hope in his mercy. Always understand the mercy of Allah. It will fill us with hope. It will fill us with goodness. We will be content and happy when we've understood the mercy of Allah. Let's go into the first verse. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim These verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the Quran with. The surah or the chapter is known as Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening surah. Fataha means to open. Al-Fatiha, the opening surah. If you look at this surah, Allah says, all praise is due to Allah. Who is Allah? Rabbul Alameen. He immediately says, the one who created and the one who is in absolute control of entire existence. He is the worshipped one, the one who is owed worship. And then he describes himself, who is he? When I say all praise is due to Allah, people want to know who is Allah. If you don't recognize Allah, how can you achieve contentment? So he chooses to describe himself firstly by saying, Rabbul Alameen, I created and I'm in absolute control of every aspect of the existence of that creation. Subhanallah. The minute you understand this, you surrender to him. You understand I'm going to go back to him. This is why Allah says all praise is due to him and him alone. And because life is filled with challenges and difficulties. He reminds us immediately after that, he chooses to say, 
Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. This is the second time we're hearing this. One of it is, or the first was, when we were starting with the name of Allah, we used the description or we used the qualities Rahman and Rahim. Again, he uses Rahman, Rahim, reminding us of his mercy, reminding us of how merciful he is upon us. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we take for granted the mercy of Allah upon us. He is indeed very merciful. He is indeed so, so kind. He has given us so much that we didn't even ask for. That is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he continues to say, Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. The minute we understand the concept of the Day of Judgment, we understand accountability. If you understand accountability, you behave yourself. You do good deeds. You actually make sure that you are conscious of the fact that you're going to be asked and questioned about everything. But because you've heard about His mercy, you know that He's going to forgive you wherever you've sought forgiveness. All this brings about the contentment of the heart, the contentment of the soul. You've recognized your maker, you understand his mercy, and you're aimed at winning on the day of judgment. What more do you want? Just in these few verses, we've encapsulated what the entire Quran stands for. It's amazing. And this is why my brothers and sisters, when we read Surah Al-Fatiha time and again, we take for granted these beautiful reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't go deep enough to ponder over them. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps reminding us of the same thing. Do you know the most important thing that happens to be in this particular surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, is actually a supplication. Do you know what Allah says? <laughs> Guide us to the straight path. If we call out to the Almighty, knowing He created us, He's in control of every aspect of existence, and we know that He is the owner of the Day of Judgment, it's only correct that we ask Him to keep guiding us to the straight path. And we repeat this supplication every day, so many times a day. Guide us to the straight path. If you don't supplicate in this way, your five daily prayers are not complete. You have to say in every unit of that prayer, guide me to the straight path, guide us to the straight path through the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. So my brothers and sisters, keep calling out to Allah. When you call out to Allah, He will definitely reach out to you. If you don't call out to Allah, you are not going to be able to achieve that contentment. Understand He is in control. Understand what He wants from you. Do you know, when we've called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe in Him firmly, it brings us towards the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The kindness towards them is what comes from us. Because we've understood that Allah made me and He made all the other creatures as well. And this is why in the next surah, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in a beautiful way, He says in verse number 3, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ What a beautiful way of wording it. He speaks about the believers, those who really believe, those who really want that guidance. You've asked for guidance. Are you sincere? Well, if you've asked for the guidance, you're going to believe in the unseen. We already believe in the unseen. What is the unseen? I believe in my Lord, my Maker. I believe in the angels. I believe that good and bad comes from Him. I believe whatever Allah has told me regarding the day of judgment and the fact that when I die, I'm going to return to the one who made me, the one whom I was with even prior to me being born. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those who believe in the unseen, those are the successful ones. They believe in the unseen. What else do they need to do? You want the guidance, you want the contentment, you must believe in the unseen. Secondly, you must establish your prayer to develop your relationship with Allah. If you develop your relationship with your maker, you will definitely be from among those who achieve contentment because you've developed your relationship with your maker. That is something amazing. So one, you've actually believed in the unseen, Two, you have developed your relationship with your maker through the establishment of prayer. And the third, you've reached out to others by spending what the Almighty has given you. So what you've understood now and what I've understood is whatever I have is from Allah. If that is from Allah, I should spend it on other creatures that Allah has created as well. This is why Allah says, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ 
They spend from that which we have bestowed upon them. If you'd like contentment, my brothers and sisters, understand that all the wealth that you have is from Allah. It was never from you. It was never due to you or your intelligence. That intelligence was given by Allah. So the root of it all is from Allah. Allah says, I've given you to test you. Are you going to spend it upon those who need or are you going to become miserly? No one has achieved contentment by being miserly, by being stingy, by being selfish, but rather people have achieved contentment by becoming very, very generous. The Prophet wasallam was known as a very generous person. He was more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him. That generosity used to show it is described as even more generous than that of the wind when it blows because when the wind blows it reaches everyone the same way the generosity of the prophet peace be upon him was such that everyone benefited from it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has taught us so much one of the primary things we learn is the first instruction that Allah has mentioned in the Quran. If you want to look at the first instruction that Allah has mentioned in the Quran, look no further than verse number 21 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhannas wa'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O people, Worship the one who made you, worship your Rabb who made you and made those before you in order that you develop your relationship with him. So to develop your relationship with Allah, you need to worship him because he made you and he made all those before you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. May Allah grant us contentment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu quloobuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi. Allah tatma'innu al-quloob